everybody. Welcome to Excel Video 404. I'm Nate Moore. I've got these two charts from a group I helped just the other day. It's a chart that I helped them build that comes via email every day. What it has is pending authorizations. Over here we've got pending authorizations as of February 26th. And then what we do is we say, okay, everything that's in this yellowish gold color, those are pre-authorizations that haven't been started yet. And the blue is pre-authorizations that have been started. And then down here, the x-axis tells you, okay, here I've got one day out, two days out, three days out. How many pre-authorizations? You can see they've got a bunch of pre-authorizations two days out. With this report and some other reports that were built, 30 days later, here is the same email pending authorizations as of March 26th. And look at the difference. Look how much more blue started pre-authorizations are here. And the yellowish gold is way out here. They're a lot more caught up a month later with some tools to manage their practice. When you're ready to do the same with your practice, I'd love to help you. I want to talk today about one of the problems we ran into when we crashed the macro recorder last week. So if we come to the developer tab, when we, when we record a macro, there's two different ways to do it. The default is to record with absolute references, which means I'm going to start with the cell you're on and I'm going to assume that if you want something in C4 you always want something in C4. What relative reference says is if you're in C4 and you move three cells to the right why I assume that if you start in F4 you're still going to want to move three cells to the right as opposed to always being in F4. Let me see if an example can make that a little more clear. I'm going to re first record a macro without turning on relative references so by default absolute references and let's do it. Let's call this, whoops, we got to call it absolute. So we'll call it that and let's click OK. So here's our macro. This is a test. And then I'm going to come over here a couple of cells. Let's control C, come over here a couple of cells and we'll hit enter. That's my macro. So now if I come over here and let's try to run this macro. I could have assigned a keyboard shortcut, but to make it easy, I want you to see which one's absolute and which one's reference. So let's run it. So I got this, but look what happened over here. Excel, instead of putting it over here in F7, put it up in F4. And if you don't believe me, we'll come over here, we'll do this, and we'll run the macro again. And see how when I recorded an absolute reference, Excel says, yeah, I'll start where you started, but I'll always go to F4 because that's absolutely where you ended up. Let's do a relative reference now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click to turn on relative references first. And let's record a macro doing the same thing. We're going to record a macro. We're going to call it relative and click OK. This is another, not rest, but, and that's, that there I did, I just broke the rule right there. And the last thing you want to do is record a macro with errors because now it's going to write this is another rest then fix it to test every time we do it but for the sake of our little test I'm going to live with it. I'm going to hit enter to, uh, to do that there control C we'll come over I'm going to put it just maybe out in column G just so we can tell the difference and we will paste it right there and stop recording our macro. So now let's come over here and let's run the relative macro. This is another test. This is another test. So you see the difference. If I came over here and ran relative, that's going to work. But if I came here and ran absolute, I'm going to put this as a test here, but absolute still locked into that F4 cell. So that's the difference between relative and absolute references when you're recording a macro. And it can become very important. Sometimes, hey, I always want to start at the top of the spreadsheet and I want to work my way from there. That's an absolute reference. But when I, as soon as I start to move around, relative references become much, much, much more important. We're going to factor that in when we go back and look at our original macro. We'll do it in the next Excel video. Thanks for watching.